So what are some of the roles that lightworkers, starseeds, indigo, indigos, empaths play? Now again, um, remember all these different words are just different stages of ascension. So really we are all of these aspects. As I go through this list, you're going to kind of laugh because you're going to find that, hmm, this is why I've always had this strange quirk about my personality or this is why as a child I, I always did this. So let's start out now with the first thing, which is you probably are someone who has moved a lot. You might have actually moved to different homes, different cities, maybe countries. Um, maybe you traveled a lot and were called to different places. Um, you might have just always, you know, been on the move. Like for me, I find that I always need to get beyond my horizon. Like um, as acupuncture points, right, for higher frequencies, we are guided to constantly move to upgrade areas of the grid. So we are literally anchoring our light and stabilizing different points of actual landmass areas. So like I said, you might be guided and have in your, in your life moved constantly. Like for me, I moved so many times, it's unreal, and I've traveled a lot too. So we are guided to travel to different areas of the planet that are stargates, maybe vortexes, portals, um, also areas that need our light. So like for me, I, when I traveled a lot, especially actually um, uh, about two years ago, um, so I was in Asia and I kind of just followed my intuition and I always ended up picking these hotels that were downtown you know, in like the oldest, most densest areas of the city. And that's where my hotel was. And so I guess I had to clean up, right? These major cities of millions of people when I was in certain areas. Of course, I prefer being in nature. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how we are guided. Um, I remember so many times I, I just had this feeling I need to go to a certain country, and like on holidays. And I never thought about that country before in my life. I didn't care. Um, it wasn't something um, like I wanted to go on as a holiday. I just felt the pull. You'll feel the pull, that urge. You'll start thinking about it. You will start having that need to go visit a certain place, which is of course part of the whole thing going on, which is keeping us stagnant right now, not being able to freely move around as much as we want to. Because imagine all of us hitting every single point on the planet, how much faster the ascension and awakening of the planet would be. So this is why they need everyone locked down into your area. You probably moved around a lot. Um, and again, also even in even um, your own city or town, you might have moved homes a lot. If you watch my video, um, How to Get Unstuck in 2022, um, I talk about how we tend to clear the area and then it's almost like we get into, into a black hole feeling where we need to expand to a new area. So you need to get out of your routine because you can find yourself really getting sucked into these same old routines in life if you stay stagnant, right? Because we are meant to constantly be evolving, growing, expanding to new horizons. So make sure that you are constantly changing up your environment and watch that video if you haven't already because I have some more ideas on that. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of grid work. So you could be a grid worker. So someone who's a grid worker has reached a level of at least the seven dimension. Now that is working with the planetary grids and the planetary logos, which is really all, all the Stargate network of the planet and all the ley lines. And so when you start embodying and reaching those levels, especially um, levels well above the seventh dimension, but that's really, you know, when people start being able to tune in and to focus and to be like, there's something weird going on where you feel the fear of, of something going on on the planet. Or you might feel all of a sudden, like you feel this weird feeling and you know that, um, that there's an earthquake about to come in a certain area or something, right? So you start really being in tune at the actual, like you integrate. So, so again, the seventh dimension is just the beginning. But, um, but later on, you will integrate all the levels of many different dimensions and beyond. So we start becoming so sensitive and tuned in to things going on on the planet. So you'll find that, um, which is probably also partly why we moved around a lot, is, is you will stabilize the grid, the area that you're in. So you might find when you go to a new place you haven't been, 
you kind of feel that dinginess. You kind of feel that like pressure. You might find it hard to breathe. You might um, find it hard to ground. You might feel everyone's energies, right? All that stickiness and ickiness. But then after you're there, right after your vortex is sweeping up the, all the energy and clearing it from that area, after a few minutes or a few hours, you will find all of a sudden, ah, okay, okay, I have a relief. I can feel better. I can breathe deeper. So yeah, we are the grid, the grid workers. So again, um, it starts out with just kind of doing it without even knowing. So even as a child, you probably were doing this. Um, I know for myself, there was many different times where I would just have these feelings of just fear come right out of me. And I just like, it was like the most intense energies. And so I probably was opening up something that was, you know, in that grid area and clearing it. So we become right circuits of of the earth being able to release through us as well as the acupuncture points of being able to bring down higher frequency energies and anchor it deep into the earth. So you do that automatically. Then later on, you might um, also be doing it more manually where you, um, it begins with people, sometimes people, people bring crystals to certain areas that, are, that they're called to, or they'll meditate in certain areas um, in nature, maybe mountains or beaches or whatever. Um, then later on, like I said, when you embody, you become the spinning vortex that is permanent, right? The spinning um, torus fields of multiple dimensions all anchored into this one area that is you, that is your spine, your light body. And then you start bec um, becoming this constant um, organ generator. So you clear chemtrails instantly. You clear, so you, I mean, you'll actually have a different sky above you. So for me, I clear full out areas for about, I'd say my field is um, a few hundred uh, kilometers wide now. So it is powerful, right? We, we become this huge force. So again, that's also why we need to stay centered and balanced and why it takes a long time to get to that level of power. Because you don't want to be at that level without mastery because then you start becoming that sideways, right, tornado. And not only are you destroying and creating destruction, but you're also pulling energy that you don't want into your field and it's getting stuck. And then it's not fun. Then you get all types of ascension symptoms and all types of emotional outbursts and you know you feel like you're pretty much dying. So, <laughs> so this is why, like I said, it, there's a process of building your light body and embodying higher and higher and higher levels because you need that mastery. Um, but yeah, then you become a gatekeeper as well. So again, I probably will have a whole video sometime on grid work and gatekeeping to kind of explain it more for you guys. As just like a little quick note about gatekeeping. So when we start being able to open up and unwind these unaligned dimensions and align them into the pillar, we become a gatekeeper so we can open up literally higher dimensions so that energy can then increase and pour into the planet of that area and then we're able to then right that area lightens up it brightens up well it typically will purge as well right because we are literally up leveling that entire area and everyone that is living in that area or existing in that area different species as well right so not just humans plants, animals, we literally, by being a gatekeeper, we open up higher portals to higher levels and we're able to now upgrade that entire landmass area. So depending on how, how powerful and how embodied you are, you can maybe just clear right a couple meters away from, um, on either side of you. Um, for me, I tend to be clearing, like I said, hundreds of kilometers wide, which is why, like I said, it, it requires mastery of many different levels of powerful forces. So like I said, it's beyond the point of this video, but know that you are already doing the good work. Because if you're watching this video, it means you're already doing that even without you really having knowledge of that. So again, it's a process, right? This happens automatically at first, and then we start being able to be um, a conscious participant in that grid work. And then gatekeeping is a whole other thing, right? Um, like I said, I'll talk about that um, with diagrams in a future video. 
make sure you subscribe and hit that like button, please. <laughs> um, those of us that have had a lot of shadow, that right, have been through a lot of traumas, have taken on a lot of traumas of, of the collective, of our ancestry, right? Um, our family lineage has been through a lot, so we have a lot going on. We end up becoming, by force, um, master transmuters of darkness. And, that, and like I said, it's by force simply because we have to. <laughs> we get so filled up and our life becomes literally a bottomless pit. We become a black hole for everyone's stuff. So again, um, if you're feeling that you are just so sensitive to energies and so sticky, you know, so, um, so I called it being sticky. I would walk and I would just <laughs> pick up everyone's stuff. They'd be feeling amazing. They'd be feeling, you know, like all of a sudden they're at a, I'm at a, at a new level and I'd be frigging grasping for breath and I'd be like flipping out and raging and crying hysterically for days, right? Or hours. So yeah, we get to be able to, well, we want to get to the point where we heal our shadow, right? We heal all these voids within us that, that is attracting that energy. So remember, if you are feeling any type of negativity from someone else, right? Like if you're sticky or you're the black hole, it means you literally have voids within your, your energy. So you have to do some healing. You have to do some shadow work, which is merging your shadow with you, with your light. And then you close those holes and you actually move that area that was, what was previously sucking everyone's crap into you. And you stop becoming the black hole and you start becoming the shining star. So that, that again happens over time. So a lot of you are probably at the process right now where you're feeling everyone's stuff. You're at overload. Remember, ground is, grounding is a big thing, right? Release everyone's stuff, right? Imagine yourself as that waterfall shining down. Your energy is going straight into the ground. It's all just coming right off you, right? Fill upon or fill in all those voids that you're feeling. And then you're going to not, not be as sticky, not be as much of a black hole for everyone's crap. <laughs> so again, this is a process also, like I said, healing your shadow. Because your shadow, your traumas, where you have that void, that is literally wormed off, wormholed off, existing in a pool of, of everyone else's shadow. So every time that you, right, that you are triggered or that you walk around, right, and come into a new energy, because you are a more powerful force, right, you are spinning faster than, than other people around you you will automatically suck in other people's stuff resonating at that level. So you want to make sure that you don't have anything in you that is resonating at that level. And then you'll find that you're a shining star and everyone else has to level up around you. So you no longer drop yourself down and take on everyone's crap like the black hole and then later on have to transmute it. So even though, like I said, a lot of us have done that all our lives. So if you remember being a child and always being sick, always being irritable, always being emotional, sensitive, right? An empath, always being, right? Always having ADD or ADHD, right? All these different traits that are really just you taking on everyone's stuff. And so then you just never get ahead. You're constantly this pit, bottomless pit, right? So that's why you need to integrate that shadow. And then what happens is you're still doing the same thing. You're, you're walking around up leveling everybody, but it's because you're blasting your light. And everyone else has to now integrate it, right? So they go through that healing, that purge, that healing crisis, that dark night of the soul. And you don't do everyone a favor, right? So you, gotta, so you have to realize it's a process of us doing our own inner healing. And then we allow others to, to also do their own inner healing. So then they learn lessons. They start leveling up, right? Because, because if you're always just giving your stuff to every, you know, to, to the light worker in your family or to, you know, your friend who's always high vibe, right? You're always spewing your stuff out to them. Or again, you as the light worker, always taking on everyone's stuff, right? Being the one. So we get a, a, another role is being that, Right? The one who always saves everybody, who always um, you know, tries to shine your light and to, to help everybody level up. So again, we can do that in various ways. We can do that, like I said, we can become the black hole and we can take everyone's stuff 
and level everybody up that way, but that's not fun for us, right? You don't need to do that. So know that, that there's another way. You can be a complete, perfected vor vortex, torus field spinning so powerfully that you will start giving off your light to everyone and everything around you. And you'll find that the people that are really kind of those, you know, energy suckers that just, you know, unload all their crap onto you, they start kind of going away because they kind of get that, the energy, they receive it back on themselves, you know? So they don't like to have their own shadow. So, so like I said, a lot of us are also, um, the gene keys, I'm an actual, um, what's called a projector. So, so all of us kind of do this, but some of us are actually, our energetic fields are projectors, which we project everyone's crap back at them. So they don't typically like being around us a lot of time, right? So you'll find that you, um, you kind of polarize people. Some people love your field, love your energy, are guided to you. And other times that you repulse people. So again, like I said, you don't want to be taking on anyone's stuff, right? Even though we've been doing it our whole life, which is why this planet has gone so much higher than it used to be because of all the work that we've done. So thank you because you've also helped me as well and everyone else to transmute a lot of this darkness on this planet. But now we're done doing that. We're done taking on everyone's stuff. We're done. So instead, everyone needs to level up to our level. So it's all about, like I said, if you're feeling that sensitivity, being an empath, um, that overload, you know, always feeling everyone's stuff and, and never feeling um, like you can be happy, <clears throat> do your own inner healing. And then you no, you no longer have those energies resonating with everyone's, you know, traumas. And then light becomes fun as a light worker. It becomes fun. <laughs> Trust me, because a lot of times, you know, throughout our life, we have done the darkest, deepest stuff for this planet, right? For, for people, because um, you have to remember, you hold the codes, right? As our DNA builds, you are being able to, so you have the pathways. You are guiding other people that, that can't get beyond their trauma, right? Some people just will never get beyond it without being able to merge with your field. And, and their light body, their, their body can physically find the pathways to reintegrate and to heal and to merge back with source. So you are that path cutter, that path where, where you can really help others to get out of you know, their loop or their suffering. So we become the living light that is constantly shape-shifting and we hold those codes for other people. So that is because we have been developing our DNA over time. So again, that's part of a, of a role of a light worker is you might have throughout your life all of a sudden just be, be needing to consume knowledge and more and more and more information. So again, it first starts out with all the fear-based stuff, right? Of all the bad stuff going on, right? That's more the 4D level stuff, but you need to build that DNA strand to then move to the higher level stuff, which is more, right? The fifth dimensional stuff is more the law of attraction, right? The secret, um, you know, the beginning of ascension, right? The unity consciousness, right? Just the beginning of it, really extreme duality still. You're still gonna go up and down be between the highs and the lows. So you wanna essentially go to beyond that. We wanna start developing higher strands of DNA six dimensional strands of DNA, seven, eight, nine, right? We can go up to literally 144 strands of DNA, right? Most people won't. <laughs> so that's also a role is constantly building your DNA through various ways. So we also do this by, by learning different methods. So you probably have, you know, been, been throughout your life or, or again, maybe you just woke up, but, but, but during our journey, we will build our, our energy work portfolio. So all the different ways that we can heal and all the different you know, layers of knowledge that we can learn and methods and tools for our toolbox. So you'll find that you might all of a sudden you know, need to take a Reiki course or need to become a shaman or need to you know, take, for example, Ascension Magic, my course. And so that will get you to the next level. 
And so then we're activated. Now, all of a sudden, we, we are at a higher level of DNA. We can then, again, activate everyone else around us to the next level. So you'll find that throughout your life, you have been activating people all the time, right? Which is why your life was never typically normal. So I have another video called 35 Signs You're a Lightworker. Make sure you watch that if you haven't. Um, because, yeah, we've had very strange lives, typically, most of us. Right? We're not linear, we're quantum, so we've had very unique um, experiences, right? Lots of traumas and things as well. Um, but yeah, that's all part of the star seed, lightworker, and um, indigo empath journey to build our DNA to get us to the point where all along our life we are activating the planet, we're being activated. We are moving to the next level. We're then activating other people to the next level. So it's this whole process. So yeah, make sure you're constantly evolving and growing and learning because as a starseed empath and go, we, we constantly need new energies. We're like energy hoarders or energy, uh, you know the word. <laughs> we need more and more and more because that really is our DNA building, right? It's kind of like a child needs stimulation, right? in order for their brain to develop. Well, our energy field needs stimulation. And so we need also higher vibrational um, energies and people around us, right? And so, so a lot of your role could be you trying to up-level other people by you know, trying to wake people up. So you, could, you could be one of those truthers or seekers and someone who constantly is speaking your truth, even though people don't wanna hear it, right? That's part of it because like I said, um, right when we first wake up, we need that fourth dimensional knowledge first, which is really the, all that fear-based stuff. And so we can't just skip from just waking up, you know, out of the blue to all of a sudden we're we're in unity consciousness and we, you know, are living with the law of one. No, we need to make sure that right we are spreading our truth, our knowledge to others. So a lot of people's role is to speak truth. And, you know, whether we are ridiculed for it, we need to speak our truth. And again, that has been an issue throughout our life is we have been always, you know, constantly told by society, teachers, you know, friends, but know that that is one of the roles. So if you're doing that, thank you so much. Keep doing it. But again, make sure you're constantly also turning your attention back in yourself and doing the inner healing so you can then level up to the next level because it's exhausting when you're always trying to wake someone up. Trust me, I've been there. I did that for years. And really, I didn't really get very far, like I said, until I went inward and I started activating people all around me. Then all of a sudden, people started, right? Well, actually, it's more about that I then started attracting to people, people like yourselves, all you amazing souls that, you know, that are guided to me. And so... So instead of me trying to, you know, speak my truth to, to, to um, you know, someone that's, that's closed or doesn't want to hear it or someone that is literally repulsed by it because they're kind of living in their own, you know, fake, fake reality bubble, fake reality paradigm, which, you know, to them is something they want to hold on to, which is happening in the world right now. Um, we need to be willing to speak our truth no matter what. So if you're doing that, keep going. But just again, remember that it gets exhausting and eventually you want to do, the, your, um, do your own inner merge. So then you attract to people, people that are ready to hear what you have to say versus you are surrounded with all these people that really are not getting it, right? So when you move yourself out of that timeline with, with all the people that are, you know, telling you that you don't have a clue about something or all the naysayers then really you're trying to step yourself down. You're trying to drop down to be around your friends or your family and it gets exhausting. So again, it's part of the journey. So beyond the point of this video, but know that that stage, that role of playing, right? Where you are the truther is very important because it gets people to that first level of awakening. So other roles that lightworkers play is artists and musicians and those that are um, expressing themselves and really channeling their their soul's energy and light and, and expressing it in a certain medium. 
So that really activates people. So if you are an artist or musician, know that even though, right, we live in a society that doesn't value that, you are so valued, you're so needed. Music is what we are, right? We are pure energy. So music changes people. Art changes people. So again, that's also a role that we play. And that's why um, um, those of us, you know, they get further and further on this path. Um, even if we start out our life, you know, like me, who was completely in my left brain, thinking all the time, right? Always constantly, you know, having to do, right? To be the best and all these, you know, shadow aspects. Um, when you align to your soul, you actually become more creative because that is really part of living with that connection to your source and your soul and the planet is creational energy, which is creative energy, artistic energy. Um, you might all of a sudden start feeling music a lot more than you ever did, right? You can feel it in your vibrating your cells. So that is a key role. So know that what you're doing is so important. So another way is we heal a lot of people and do a lot of um, grid work while we sleep. So sleeping is actually one of the biggest roles of lightworkers, which is probably why throughout your life you, you've either had issues going to sleep or you've been someone who has just needed so much sleep or both. <laughs> um, and sleep is always this, you know, constant struggle as well. It's because um, when we sleep, we can really fractal out into multiple dimensions. Instead of us kind of having all of our energy in our waking life, right, in our you know, physical reality existence. When we're sleeping, we can have our soul fractal out into so many different dimensions. And so we are doing work on every dimension at once when we sleep. So that's why sleeping so important for integrating new energies, um, so important for healing yourself. Um, also, we also can save other souls when we sleep. So I, so I do a lot of this, which is really, um, moving people or their soul fragments from a lower level to a higher level. And, and actually, I did a reel on Instagram about this the other day, talking about how, um, you know, lately, for, well, this has been going on for years, but really the past few months has been constant, nonstop. Um, me kind of finding myself in dreams where I'm moving through like underground bunkers or like, you know, rooms or hotels with like so many people, um, like in different rooms. And I have to find all these people, right? And so what we're doing is we're again, being that, that path cutter, being able to find people that are trapped into these lower consciousness, you know, um, loops of the phantom matrix. And we are being able to bring them, right? We, we, we allow them to come back into alignment. So you do, you save, you're saving souls while you sleep. So that's why we need so much sleep. We can also become a psychopomp, which is really um, I'm allowing other beings to move through your your dimensional torus field and into source or back into higher levels. So we are transitioning um, souls that have either died or um, lost soul parts, right? Um, trapped consciousnesses through all of our fields and out back into really uh, the infinite. So we're able to now, you know, allow um, a lot of these, I wouldn't call them ghosts, I'll have a video about ghosts sometime, but, um, but a lot of these souls that are just lost or soul parts that are stuck in very low um, energy systems. So, um, so being a psychopomp, you are more moving whole, entire, um, souls through your body, which is, um, again, I had a whole post about that on Instagram talking about it's very difficult uh, to be a psychopomp. And again, this is an advanced level of ascension. Um, but because you need to be that open circuit all the time on every single level, or what you'll have is a constant feed of these energies of these, um, these entities coming through your, your field needing to be released back into source. And if you're blocked, they get stuck and then start panicking. Then you start feeling the fear, then it's chaos. And so then you can have ascension symptoms, right? You can, like I said, there's a whole thing with that, but um, that's why 
it is really mastery keeping every single part of your um, vertical channel open because when you become the, the human psychopomp, so normally psychopomping is done by angels or by higher level beings. So when you become um, really embodied at the, at the angelic level, which is really the ninth dimension or above, you start becoming, like I said, that human psychopomp. So again, for most of you, this is not, um, not a world that you're at yet, but just to kind of, you know, an FYI that as we lead into that, um, you need to make sure that you're, again, all your energies are in alignment because if it starts happening to you, then you're going to know why, right? Versus being in fear that you're being attacked by entities, which is, you know, something that happened to me for quite a few years. I was in pure fear because I was also feeling all the fear of these entities, right? These lost souls, we won't call them entities like, like it's some scary thing. It's more just these, you know, souls that have been disconnected from their, from their source. And so they're holding a lot of fear, right? There's a reason why they got disconnected. So they're holding that fear and you have it coming through. You have to be open and clear to allow them to move through you very quickly. Otherwise, it gets very difficult. So um, it's like I said, we do so many different roles and it's easier when, when we're healed. Because if we have blockages, if we have traumas, if we're fractaled out, right, the fractaled soul, um, then as you move into higher levels, these fractaled areas, these shadow aspects of yourself become so apparent, which is why, you know, we should have, we should have done the healing a long time ago, but, you know, but as we get higher and higher, if we, if there's areas of us that we haven't yet healed, you will know because they will become apparent. They will become hugely big issues in your life. Um, because again, right, with, with higher levels embodiment becomes more responsibility, becomes more power, right? And so you end up becoming at the, right, you're embodying spirit. You are now trusted as a guardian, as an actual God co-creator. And so it becomes imperative that you live from a high ethical way of existence, right? That you have high integrity, that you have high alignment, all these different things, right? So again, this is a process. It's not something that you need to do in one day, right? This is literally a process over your lifetime. Um, but that's what we're doing, right? One of the roles of light workers and star seeds and past indigos is to co-create the new earth. So a lot of us, um, especially people that, that, that just woke up, um, you know, don't feel that you're behind because a lot of your role might be to co-create a new earth. So as you move into higher and higher ascension levels, you go from supporting and serving individuals and small groups and small communities to helping to serve the entire planet, right? Helping humanity on a global scale, the actual energetic grids of the entire planet. And then beyond the planet, you start being able to serve the one, which is all galactic aspects all the aspects of you that are fractaled out into interdimensional levels. So you start really serving the universe. So you'll find along your path that your role becomes so powerful, so big, it becomes something beyond what you could have ever imagined. So you might find yourself right now, your role is changing big time. So you could be you know, feeling that need to branch out from helping individual people to maybe having a YouTube channel or supporting large amounts of people. So that is how our role evolves over time. So each one of you is so important. Never doubt that. Each one of you is needed and is playing your individual role. We're all exactly where we need to be. We're all spread out around the planet, which is what I talked about in, in another video. You are here playing so many roles, right? We're not just here for one. You've already been doing it, whether you knew it or not. You are naturally guided by internal uh, energies and guidance your whole life. So that's how amazing you are. And know that as you go throughout your journey, as you do your own inner healing, as you move through your incension, 
you start being able to become such a powerful force for the entire universe. Star Wars is nothing compared to our reality. For more, check out my course, Ascension Magic, on earth1111.com, where I go into hundreds of topics just like this. Then you can also join my premium membership, which I go into many different topics every month and a question and answer video and much more. So that's on my website. Love you guys so much. Don't forget to share the video, comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you on the next video. I'm Roxanne. This has been Earth 1111. Bye-bye.